Hi everybody, Elkrex here. I have a question that came in from one of my subscribers asking me, what are your thoughts on light mechs and how to really look at building a light lance for your game? That's kind of an interesting question. Of It depends on, I'll just preface this, what era are you playing in and what's available during that era? So if you're playing Succession Wars, uh, you have some good selection of mechs that are considered light mechs to medium light mechs types categories. So you have ways of looking at them in speed, capability, what's your preference of play style. So that's kind of the things you have to look at. So if you're looking at 3025, 3050 plus 355, 358, 60, 65, you know, going up the scale, there's all kinds of mechs that are available in each one of those areas. So what's available in the 3025 is also available in the 3050, maybe even upgraded. So that is something you have to look at. Now, let's just start. I'm going to go from the aspect, this is 3050. 3025. There we go. Uh, succession Wars, you know, from uh, let's just go 20, 2850 through almost 3050. There is a lot of mechs that are available that have different kinds of speeds. And I always like to categorize them as like you got the really fast light mechs, then you got your medium. Uh, speed light mechs because during the, the succession wars a 464 moving mech or a 4640 mech with no jump jets is pretty common so anything that's going 58 could be almost like a skirmish slash uh, flanker your six nines are moving into the light lance category as a scout and then you get the sevens and eight movers which are really true 100 percent scouts and you got those categories i like to kind of pigeonhole mechs into and then look at their capabilities from that point and what i want it to do so if you look at the really fast light mechs we're, we're talking about the locusts the jenners the spiders os uh, scout mongoose and then we have some mechs that kind of fall into a medium scout. They're fast. Uh, so these guys could be attached to a medium lance as the eyes and ears. We're talking about the assassin, the cicada, you know, those types of mechs. I mean, you could even think about the Hermes and the, the Hussar in there also. Because there's some Star League mechs also that are going like the 2750 era, you know, during that succession war with the Ameris uh, uh, Rebellion. So you have some access to those. And I always look at those as those are your true scouts, you know, that you have access to, uh, that are used throughout the eras. Now, I prefer, now of all those, my preference would be 100% the spider. That is the one mech that I prefer the most of all the scouts for what it brings to the table because it is an 8128. It doesn't have a lot of armor. It get, it get hammered hard if it gets hit. But this thing can jump around quickly, displace, and have a hard time hitting it. So if it keeps jumping, uh, it could have a 4 mod on it all the time. You know, jump 7, jump 8. And get around but it uses up all of its uh, movement if because it only has that 10 heat sinks and everything is just tossed in its movement so it's not going to really be it could fire a medium laser and heat up it could fire two of them and then heat up by four and then maybe it jumps away and cools off that type of deal so that is kind of like how you're going to look at these is then it how uh, much battle value you're going to have in a game and how, what do you want it to do so you may just say okay i'm, I'm going to throw some locusts in there it's many different variants of it to toss into a game is like it's an 812 it's going to move fast it's, it's looking for 
avenues approach that it can get in close spot for let's say you got a lance of artillery or even uh lrm style fire support lance in the background these guys are going to be going out there and looking for targets to get a line of sight to so they can do their indirect fire if you want to and possibly even if they equip them with tag if you want because a lot of the mech light mechs that i have it would be equipped with tag so that will help with your artillery uh, fire support or that nature getting your uh indirect going then uh with that the jenner is actually a really good choice 35 tons it's the 711 5. i personally usually took my jenners and and kick off that SRM-4 in favor of the more jump jets. So you have at least seven jump jets and more armor on that bugger. So that's kind of like how I look at that one. But just right out of the, as a book mech, it's a good scout that I wish it had more jump jets, but you know, it's wrapped up in that SRM. So it can move around pretty quickly and uh, spot for you. Then the Oscout Scout is another one. It's, it's the Oscout Scout is like a uh, my I say a version of the Spider in a way. You know, it's I think it only has one weapon system on board, and it's an eight twelve eight, so it's just as mobile uh, to get around. And I prefer that eight twelve movement. Now, if I had a choice between the uh, Oscout Scout or the uh, the Spider, I usually take the Spider just because a little bit more equipment on board but you know it's the nature of the beast it's what you have available so if somebody's building a, a scenario for you and they're, they're throwing some mechs out there on the tables it may be that they have an off scout that they'll put on the table so that's something to think about now when i discussed about some like medium mechs that are like in the light category like the assassin cicada those are your your mechs that are heavy or they're medium mechs but they're heavier than your typical light mechs and they're you're talking about a 7 7 with the assassin not a lot of firepower uh but it's being used more or less as a eyes and ears type thing for it could be an eyes and ears for even a medium lance so, you know, if you have a lance that has, let's say, some trebuchets or some dervishes or something of that nature, you know, you could be using those guys uh, as the eyes and ears. So it's still a medium mech, but it has some good capability uh, running around with it. And then the same thing with the Cicada, that's an 812. It's, it's kind of like a locust, but a heavy-duty locust, a little heavier. So you're talking more inter internal structure, but the armor is about the same you know it doesn't have a lot of armor at all so if you take a hit with that thing and you're punching through it so that speed is going to be its friend running around now since i was talking about the succession wars where a lot of mechs are just running around with average pilots not really great pilots and everybody's a four six mover we can look at the secondary category of the lights, which are your six nines. There's a large group of six nine moving uh, light mechs in the game. We're talking like the wasps and the stingers, the commandos, the javelins, the fire stars, the uh, wolfhounds, the falcon. You know, we're looking at those type of mechs that are not really fast, but they do have some good mobility and the succession wars where a lot of pilots are just four or five pilots pretty average rudimentary pilots so they're not really great a six nine moving six you know if they jump uh at least six you know they got a three mod or they run the the nine hexes or so at least seven you know they have a three mod uh that actually is working pretty good in the game early now, when you start talking about adding all the extra equipment, you know, like get into like the clan wars. Uh, during the clan wars, a clan mech will look at a 6 9 moving mech and go, mmm, yummy, tasty, yummy, yum, yum. And they'll just chomp down on it and and uh, it'd be done. It was like a little snack pack for it. So that's something you have to think about. 
so that's why you're seeing pref prevalence of more higher technology in the clan wars and beyond but in succession wars these mechs i discussed just uh, mentioned are not that bad uh if that's all you have access to they're going to work for you uh the odds are they're probably going to get hit a little bit more often uh the odds of them getting hitting at long range and medium range are probably slim to none but it's when they get in the close range that's when it gets really dangerous for these guys that's when you're talking about needing nines tens elevens and twelves to hit and let me tell you i've hit a locust once twice three at least five times with an ac20 before over the years and it like blow a leg off or blow hit it center torso and just core the darn thing real quick so it is possible to hit them when they get in close so if you're looking at using these guys as eyes and ears uh you probably want to look at kind of staying out at a distance and using your fire support to soften up your targets now later in the game you know, obviously you get a lot of these light mechs uh that's when they start diving in and, and knifing you know getting a knife fighting range because there's a lot of targets if they haven't taken any damage or hardly any damage uh later in the game when everybody's getting up close and personal in the uh kicking scratching and eye gouging range uh in the succession wars these guys are going to get ignored because everybody wants to take care of the mediums the heavies and assault mechs that are right in their face so they typically will ignore the light mechs because the odds are that hitting them is like if i need a six to hit a let's say uh crusader or i need a, a 10 or 11 to shoot the light mech who do you think i'm going to shoot at the odds are i'm going to take out the 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 crusader you know it's usually in your favor to do such things and then you can maybe try to hunt down and then there's always the game of uh scouting anti-scouting mechs and a lot of these six nine mechs can fall into that anti-scouting role uh pretty quickly now let's see we did i say the clint the hermes the vulcan sentinel wolfhound falcon those are some more mechs that are the six nine moving mechs some of them have jump jets some don't but they're pretty good at being uh, shoehorned into the scout role and they can get the job done typically in the uh, succession wars now like i said when you, if you move into the clan era then you know all bets are off and things change a bit then it's like i there's the like to say the valkyrie that's an interesting mech it's a 585 it's slow but during the succession wars it can move around it's like i've used the the valkyrie before as like at bringing an lrm 10 it's kind of like a mobile uh fire support mech for a scout lance it's not fast by any means so it can get run down by any typical six nine mover but it can bring a little bit of firepower to the table so it sort of is a scout but it's not it's more of a fire support for a scout lance or a uh, flanking more of a flanker it falls into the category as a flanker and we'll talk about what to do with some uh, slower moving uh, medium mechs now one mech that will fall into this one i always like to use it as a uh, lance leader a lot of times for a scout lance because you could have let's say a locust a jenner and a spider and it's backed up by a phoenix hawk it's like yeah all the other ones are faster but a six nine moving 45 ton mech with some good firepower that is the phoenix hawk and that's the one thing i like about the phoenix hawk is that i could always like shoehorn it into a scout lance so it, it's will act as a flanker with some good firepower can act as an anti-scout mech and uh it will attract a little bit more attention because people look at that 
uh, phoenix hawk moving around the flank and they go, oh boy we got to take care of that thing that thing's dangerous and they're going to ignore the actual scouts that are coming their way so it's like the shiny goldfish of the lance and it's like shiny thing and everybody's focusing on the shiny thing and they're ignoring what's coming around the backside so that's one mech that i always like to toss in there it, it's kind of a wild card in the way if you got the points for it use it and it'll take off a little bit of heat from your scouts you know it's you have to look at the grand scheme of things in the game is what you want to do with your lance what its goal is and how you're going to apply this and sometimes just like in like if you're playing chess uh, a lot of times people will fixate too much on let's say you know this will be like a phoenix hawk could be like your bishop your knight running around and people are oh i got that thing's get dangerous i gotta take that and they're ignoring the pawns that are moving around and your scouts could be your pawns uh just whipping around type of thing even though pawns are probably more cl closer to being or the uh, scouts are more like bishops or rooks be able to move across the table quickly but if you understand what i'm trying to say here is that you need something that will attract attention away from these guys so those are some of the mechs that i always like to think about for building a lance and typically it's my first choice is always the spider. Then I'm going to look at the Jenner, the Locust, and the Phoenix Hawk are going to be some prime contenders uh, for that lance. And if I want strictly all fast moving, at least a seven mover, then it's going to be down to your Locusts, your Jenners, your Spiders, and your Aw Scouts, and maybe even a Cicada tossed in there. But that's the thought process i go through hope you guys like this and uh, maybe we'll do some more of these like some mediums the heavies and assault mechs kind of thought processes all right we'll see you in the next one El Crace out